Mr. Goldberg is in court. He has to testify. Judge says to him, what's your name? He says, Irving Goldberg. Judge says, and how old are you, Mr. Goldberg? He says, 83, Ken and Hara. Judge says, no, no, no. No, 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 Mr. Goldberg, just, just give me your name. Give me your age. He says, Irving Goldberg, I'm 83, Ken and Hara. Judge says, Mr. Goldberg, perhaps you don't understand. I don't want you to say anything else at all. Just for the record, tell me your age. He says, 83, Ken and Hara. Judge says, I'm going to hold you in contempt of court, Mr. Goldberg. I don't want to do that. Just tell me your age. Now the lawyer has to intervene. The lawyer says, Your Honor, if you don't mind, let me ask Mr. Goldberg. The judge says, Fine. Lawyer comes up, he says, Mr. Goldberg, how old are you, Kanan Hara? He says, 83. <laughs> now, it is a very Jewish joke. Because as Jews, we believe so very deeply in the power of words. You look at the Torah reading that we just finished chanting, and again and again, it's that theme that comes up. We learned in this reading about the Nazir, the one who makes a vow before God and so has to live up to the words that he spoke. We learn about the Sota, the spouse who is not being totally truthful with the other and all the problems that could come from that. We learned about, and I mentioned, the priestly blessing and the power, the incredible power that words have to lift this world up toward blessing, toward truth, or as we know, the opposite. I bring it up, of course, because this is our Shabbat in solidarity with Israel. I'm so glad and so proud to see those who are here on this Shabbat. And a lot of words have been spoken over the last 11 days, 12 days. Words will continue to be spoken about what's going on in Israel through these days and into these weeks. Among all those words, I'm with David Harris. I'm with David Harris, the head of the American Jewish Committee. He wrote that when it comes to all the words that are being spoken about Israel now, those words we're hearing on the news, those words we're seeing as we scroll through a news feed, those words our friends and family members are speaking, he says there is moral clarity, and then there is moral fog. And I don't have to tell you, I don't think, that we hear a lot more fog than clarity. Comedians like John Oliver, who should be absolutely ashamed of himself on last week tonight, accusing Israel of war crimes, accusing Israel of the war crimes with a laugh, like it's a joke. So-called authorities, they're not. In the media, celebrities who have no clue, who are tossing around phrases like Israeli apartheid or Palestinian genocide casually, flippantly to their millions of followers and they have no thought behind it, they have no sophistication behind it, they have no reference to history, they have no reference to the truth, and it's irresponsible. It's irresponsible. Their words, I believe, come from a place of moral fog and it's dangerous. You've heard that in the last week in LA, Jewish diners were attacked for no crime other than the crime of being Jews having dinner. That in the city, someone was attacked for wearing a kippah. People are getting caught up in this frenzy of hatred that's fueled by these irresponsible words, and it's dangerous, and if we don't call it out, who will? Hear these guys talk about Israel, these celebrities, these politicians, sadly many of them, these comedians, these commentators, to hear them talk and put Israel and Hamas in the same breath, it's despicable. There's no moral equivalency there. It baffles my mind, as I hope it baffles yours, 
to hear these so-called experts try to talk about a cycle of violence. This isn't a cycle. You can't put on the same moral ground a terrorist organization bent on destruction, which is what Hamas is, a group that has such little regard for human life, they'll lob rockets at their own people. They don't care. They'll hide in schools. They'll hide in hospitals. To put that in the same breath with a moral equivalency, that pure evil with Israel, which has every right in the world to defend its people like every other nation. If Mexico started lobbing rockets at Texas tomorrow, you think there'd be any discussion in the world about whether Texas has that right to defend itself? I don't think so. There's no moral equivalence there. You know, Golda said it. In 1975, it is so true in 2021 still, when it comes to those who stand against Israel, almost always we know their decisions are made not on the basis of what is good for them, but on the basis of what's bad for us. Hamas in their charter, you can read it, it's crystal clear. They want destruction. They will not rest until Israel is wiped off the map. There's no equivalency there to the IDF that does everything it can to warn someone to leave a building before an attack. Who does that? How can you utter those in the same breath? I don't know how these reporters sleep at night. I really don't. When they write an article and they title it, Israel attacks Gaza. But they do. They're speaking, they're writing, too many of them, from a place at my most generous of moral fog and at worst, I believe, plain old-fashioned anti-Semitism hatred of Jews. You know, that's not what surprised me, though, this week. Not surprised there. We know what to expect from the BBC. We know what to expect from John Oliver and Trevor Noah. We know what to expect from the New York Times. We know, and we've known for years, what level they're operating at. I'll tell you what disturbed me on a much more personal level this week, and Kaylee knows. It was a letter. You can find it online. I encourage you to do so after Shabbat. A letter that was signed by 100 rabbinical students. Let me repeat that. 100 close to rabbinical students. JTS, my alma mater. Ziegler, the other conservative seminary from HUC, the Reform Seminary from Hebrew College, the non-denominational seminary from the Reconstructionist too, you bet. 100 future rabbis. You want to know what their big idea was this week? in this open letter to Jewish communities everywhere? Here it is. Hold Israel accountable. That's what they say. Hold Israel accountable for its human rights abuses, for its apartheid. Can you believe this week rockets are falling on Jews who are trying to pray for Shavuot and for Shabbat. They're in a bunker holding services with their children, afraid, afraid for their lives while they pray. 4,400 rockets plus falling on the Holy Land. And that's all you have to say as a future rabbi to the communities that you're going to be leading is do an al -chet. Guys, it's your fault. Your fault for wanting to live safely and peacefully in your homeland. That's what they have to say. That's moral fog. I have stronger words for them. I hope I don't bump into any of these students at ordination. Not a single mention in this letter from close to 100 rabbinical students of the suffering of Israelis. Not a single mention of Hamas as a terrorist organization that's responsible not only for the suffering, tremendous suffering of Jews, but Palestinians too, who are caught up in this mess that they've created. I'm embarrassed for those students. I'm worried for them when they go to look for a job. But I'm scared for our future. 
that they are going to be the ones standing in front of a microphone like this one speaking to a Hebrew school class? Speaking to a group of Jewish teens who are getting ready to go off to college? I, I cannot believe that. You know, I care a lot about the suffering of innocent Palestinians, who some of whom want peace. I think we all have to care about that. It's why we care so much that we stand against Hamas with every fiber of our beings. We don't want anyone to suffer as Jews. But you're going to be a rabbi. You want to be a Jew. You need to have a little Ahavat Yisrael. You need to have a little love and a little respect for your ancestors, for your grandparents and their grandparents who died so that we can return to our holy land and live there in safety. You've got to have a little respect and a little love for the Jewish future there. That God willing, my kids and my grandkids are going to be standing at the Kotel and they're not going to be worried about rockets falling on their heads, God willing. What a travesty, that letter. Just broke my heart. I'm glad we still have friends. I'm glad that those of us who call ourselves supporters and friends of Israel and allies of Israel still have courageous friends in this world. We need to thank the allies that we do have. We need to tell them that we're grateful we have them. We need to thank God that we have them. I'll read you one more statement in this sea of words that we've seen through these 11 days amidst all the fog, all the moral fog. These are words of moral clarity. And I'll share with you who said them after I tell you the words themselves. He said this, I'm here to affirm as a member of Congress, one who intends to be here in government for a long time that I have an unwavering commitment to both the sovereignty and the security of Israel as a Jewish state. What is under siege is not only Israel, what is under siege is truth itself. Now is not the time to be silent. All of us, especially those of us holding elected office, have to be visible and vocal, fearless and forceful in standing up for our greatest friend in the Middle East. I'm here to state in the clearest possible terms that I stand with Israel because doing so quite simply is the right thing to do. You know who made that statement? An African-American progressive Democrat from the Bronx, Richie Torres. You know what it takes for a progressive African-American Democrat to stand up and make a statement like that? Do you have any idea of the moral courage and moral clarity that takes? And the pushback that he has gotten from thousands and thousands who are now calling him out and threatening him, I'm sure, worse for him to be able to stay. I stand with Israel because doing so quite simply is the right thing to do. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. When it comes to this, it doesn't matter. I hope you can applaud Richie Torres for taking that kind of stand. He's a friend we need. Someone who's not afraid amidst all that moral fog to take a stand and to do so with passion, and with a love for the truth. If he could say that, my friends, if he could stand up and say that in that bubble that he lives in and the pressure that he must be feeling right now on this Shabbat, I sure hope we can too. I hope that you can know too what it means to use your words and your actions to spread a light of moral clarity around this issue. If you're sitting here right now, if you're watching on the live stream and you're not sure where you fit into the events of this last week, let me just remind you that if you feel a connection to our holy land, when you're here and you're praying and you're facing Jerusalem, if that means anything to you at all, if you care, about the land that our ancestors yearned to return to for thousands of years. 
and the vision of peace and democracy that goes behind that if you feel strongly that in a world where we know anti-Semitism, it's always there, it's existed forever, if you feel strongly that we need Israel, and if you feel strongly that your children and your grandkids should be able to go to college and put an Israeli flag on the wall of their dorm room without being harassed and without being threatened, don't walk out of this sanctuary with your head down. Don't leave this room today shrinking from this conversation. This isn't someone else's fight. This isn't someone else's conversation. Don't let your voice get drowned out here. You know, I didn't plan for us in my first week here at TBT to start an Israel Action Committee. I didn't plan to be speaking about this issue on my second Shabbat. I didn't plan to have an Israel Advocacy Shabbat. But here we are, because we need to. I hope that as we continue on, we will know how to plan and craft events and conversations so that our community can spread a beacon of light around this issue to the community at large. So in just a moment, I'll conclude and we'll all rise. We'll say the Amida. We'll say the words we're all familiar with. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Holy, holy, holy. And you know as we say those words, we lift ourselves up. Well, I hope that will be a reminder today. The Shabbat and into the weeks ahead. Yes, there is a ceasefire, but the war of words continues to rage on. Lift your voices toward that which you know to be true. May they be heard in the heavens above and here on earth. May they join together with Jews and supporters of Israel everywhere as we sing, as we pray, as we speak out, as we celebrate, and as we proclaim loudly. We stand with Israel. Let's rise now.